Okay, we start with you, uh, Ole. It must be an um, exciting, a special uh, evening. Former teammates uh, play against your own home town. How was it? Uh, special, of course. The whole build-up to the uh, game was special for a uh, guy from Kristiansund. And uh, uh, I think uh, the, the crowd enjoyed it, of course, when there's five, six, th six thousand people from Kristiansund here. It's a special night for everyone. and. Um, I thought they held their own. Of course, we, we pressed, uh, but we couldn't get the goal. And two times uh, Solskjaer at the bench, and mm -hmm. then Noah, 19, made his debut. How do you feel about that? No, special, of course, for the, for the boy. He's uh, trained with them now for a little while, and to, to make the debut there is great for him and a proud moment, I think. And for me as well, it's uh, good to see him enjoy football. Thank you, uh, Ole. Christian, almost a draw against Manchester United. Mm. And this is your, one of your best friends. Yeah, first of all, uh, for us uh, in KBK, Christian Sund, it was a huge experience and a fantastic uh, uh, experience. Experience. <laughs> experience. <laughs> so Innovation, experience, <laughs> everyone from UK. <laughs> Sorry. So, so uh, the guys uh, sitting in the Kobeko uh, Christian Sund dressing room now is so proud. Uh, they can now for the rest of their lives say that we played Man United. And thanks to Ole Gunnar and, uh, and, uh, and uh, United for letting us do that. And uh, it was a, an amazing day. And 5,000 people, at least, come from uh, Kristiansund. At least, I think, because uh, we have a, a lot of uh, uh, supporters also from uh, Kristiansund, who is supporting even Man United even, uh, even more. So, uh, so uh, yeah, seeing and playing against uh, United, for me, for the players, for everybody, uh, a dream come true. OK, then uh, we are ready for questions. We have two microphones, so please use them. Vege. Ole Gunnar, uh, how was it as a, as a dad to be able to give uh, two of your sons, or you gave one of the sons uh, this mm -hmm. moment and you gave the other one uh, this moment, and, and who decided that the, the youngest was going to be uh, assistant manager tonight? He did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just one of those uh, nights that you can uh, get once, once in your lifetime, and of course it's, it was great for him. So he was proud to be sat there, but it's, uh, he knows his football, so uh, he had a good analysis after the game. <laughs> Next one, please. Yes, please, in the first row. No, uh, at this point of the preseason, it's all about fitness and getting yeah. the players sharp. Is there a concern for finishing? I think it was 30 shots, and Roger is better opponent. Yeah. Well, I think I've said before uh, in press conferences that we need to be more clinical. Of course, that's where you win, ga win the games. I think we're uh, looking solid at the back. They had, a gr they had a great chance early on, second half, but that was one um, decent chance, and we should have done better. Their keepers played well, I have to say. All three of them <laughs> did well, and there were some, some great saves. But we, uh, we're going to keep working, keep improving and keep making the relationships between uh, the players and the patterns work even better. And uh, it's not a concern, but it's something that we're going to have to improve on. Very good. Question to both. Uh, the 16-year-old Max Williamson uh, did a good job against Paul Pogba in the lead, uh, uh, in the end of the match. Uh, what do you think about that challenge? And uh, does it sum up this uh, special game? <laughs> yeah, that was an uh, important challenge uh, in front of the goal. So uh, yeah, and Max, like you know, is a youngster coming through in uh, in Copa Cabana, So the future hopefully look uh, very good. Well, uh, Pogba look, looked a bit surprised, didn't he? He's a top boy, Max. I've, uh, I've actually uh, he's played with my daughter, the same age, and uh, I've coached him a little bit. So we know he's one of the next ones coming through from uh, from our local uh, town. So, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if any any team over in England would uh, think about him in academies. In the middle, please, and then first row. Yes, uh, Ole, you talked about uh, Christensen holding their own. Um, many people, especially in Norway, have been kind of talking down the level of the elite Serien uh, the last couple of uh, years. Uh, how do you think Christensen's performance today shows 
what the teams also in Norway are capable of. Yeah, I was uh, I was wondering myself how the the level were going to be shown today, and I, I thought some of the players really held their own, and you can see that they can play at a higher level. Of course, we were the better team, and but I'm uh, surprised by all the negative talk. Uh, we can see. Uh, the structure, the very, very good. It's hard to play against, and a little bit more uh, precision and some counter attacks first half, they would have created chances, and that's uh, that's one of the big strengths of Norwegian football, and uh, that's something that we uh, in in England now are maybe not as used to, and to play against compact teams like this and with their game plan of that counter attack. Yes. Hi, Ollie. Um, it's obviously the first time we've seen you since Shanghai. Yeah. Is there any um, update on how Eric Bailly is? Is there an idea of how long he's going to be out for? Yeah, he's had an operation and he'll uh, he'll miss the uh, best part of four or five months, I would think. Uh, hopefully we'll get him back for around about Christmas. It was um, a positive news from the, from the surgeon. Uh, he had the operation, was it this morning? And uh, it was positive that it was all repaired, and uh, he'll be fine. And that's uh, that's good news. Only, only sorry, another question. Um, obviously, this time of year we have to ask about transfers. We we understand the club have opened discussions with Juventus over a potential deal for uh, Paolo Dybala. How hopeful are you of getting a deal over the line for a player of his calibre? Well, I'm I'm not here to uh, talk about uh, any uh, rumours or speculations about other teams' players, but of course we're uh, we're working on one or two cases, as I've said before, and hopefully we'll, or uh, there's another ten days ish before we uh, we start the league, and hopefully we can announce a fresh face or two. Uh, Oli, you gave um, David De Gea the captain's armband today. He's obviously said that he like he would like it on a permanent basis. Are you any closer to making that decision? Oh well, we'll uh, we'll see. <laughs> We've got uh, different kinds of uh, captain types. There's leaders, vocal leaders. There's players who, uh, who've, like David, who's with his merits and what he's done, and he'll he'll play um, majority of the game. So we'll announce something soon, probably. Hi, Ollie. Just back on Dybala and Lukaku. Um, obviously, he hasn't played now in any of the f the uh, five games that you've had pre-season, is it for the best for both him and for the club that he moves on now, do you think? Well, he got injured, so it was best for him to stay home now This because uh, he wouldn't have been able to play. Hopefully, um, he might be able to train during the next couple of days, uh, Rom, and then let's see what happens. You, you never know what happens in football, but uh, he's not been able to, uh, uh, to train. But it wasn't that bad that we uh, had to send him home from, uh, we still had hope he was going to be fit in uh, in Australia and Shanghai and Singapore, but now this short trip was there was no point bringing him. There you go. all then. Ole, you mentioned uh, the negativity around Norwegian football. What, in your opinion, should be done to to uh, uh, raise the, the positivity around our football? You think? Ah, well, there's always critics that want to want to say something negative and uh, there's us that work uh, in football that can see what's being done every single every, every single day and the progress that's being made and let's see how the teams fare in uh, in Europe you see Haugesund beat Sturm Graz 2-0 I don't think uh, uh, too many uh, would believe that three or four years ago Christian what's your uh, opinion on this team on uh, this team this theme, yeah, no, subject. Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, I'm uh, subjective. Subjective. Uh, I'm one of the Norwegians uh, training uh, as a coach. I, I think uh, uh, I can answer the question, of course. But uh, I think uh, if you ask the boys uh, who played the United today. I think uh, some of them uh, tell, "Wow, it's a it's a fantastic level." But at the same time, they they, they know that uh, United is one of the best teams. So and uh, so, uh, I think it's a lot of uh, good quality as well in the, in Norwegian football, and, and we are coming. Okay, then we have the last questions. Beside you. Obviously, this was the, the fifth 
summer game, have you got a pretty good idea in your head now of the team that is probably going to start against um, Chelsea in a, in a few days? Yeah, but then again, it's not about one team uh, for the first game, and that's the team for the rest of the season. We've got a strong squad, and I feel that there's not too big a difference when we make the subs. So, of course, we're going to have to find um, the right balance. We've, we've not really picked the first 11 yet, and uh, but most of the relationship we've, we've tried. So, Milan uh, will be another last test, and then let's see how we what we decide on, but this depends on the oppos opposition as well. Does it seem like a, a very strong team that you picked tonight? Is, is it too much to say that that's close to what you're thinking of, of starting against Chelsea? Is that? I think when Paul Pogba doesn't start, I think you know he's not the first 11. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs>